Hello and welcome to New Forest Morphs. I'm here with Jared, my son, and uh, we're father and son uh, hobbyists and breeders on ball pythons. And uh, this is part two of our daily blog. And uh, on part one, you would have seen uh, some uh, various things that we were covering. We're actually doing a series on how to care for ball pythons. And uh, go back and have a look at part one if you want to um, catch up with us and then come on to this part two. Um, but we're talking uh, antiseptics, antibiotics and treatment of snakes. But before we go there, we've had a new addition to our collection that came in from quarantine. Been out two months in our quarantine area. She came to us cold and um, we were disappointed with the way in which that was carried over from Europe. She's a 2.8 kilogram girl and she is a pastel clown as part of our Batman project. And we brought her in to help us with our project. So obviously Jared and I were gutted when she came in cold, weren't we Jared? So let's go and have a look at her. What, what did you do before you brought her in last night? There's two things that motivated us to bring her in. One of them was the fact that she'd eaten last week. So it shows us that despite going through a very cold period, she was back on food. The second thing was that um, Jad and I were looking at the ambient temperature in the house and it wasn't as good as in here. So you thought best to bring her in, didn't you, Jad? Yeah, she'd be happier in here. Yeah, because the ambient temperature... And so she had passed all the tests, like her poos were fine. Yeah. She was clean, no clean. mites, no, no RI. So everything looked clean, so we brought her in. Just to be precautious, we've got a whole rack and a half ready for um, grow-ons that aren't actually in at the moment. So we've put her in the middle range where the temperatures tend to be um, pretty constant. And we've also keeping her away from our other snakes, just in case, because you know she could show an outbreak or something could happen uh, later. So it just keeps that extra little bit of cushion of comfort for us. Um, but do you want to have a look at her? We won't take her out because she's only been there one night, but we'll just let you have a peek sneak preview. I mean, she drives me crazy to ask you, and I think she's a beautiful baby, but come and have a look, Chad. I love the clown girls. So this is our second pastel clown, and she's a proven breeder, apparently. Um, but do you want to have a look at her, Chad? Mm-hmm. No, she's bowl happy, which is good. You can see she's probably about six or seven years old, because can you see how established she is? Yeah, very to dull. Yeah, to get to a three kilogram girl, she she she's obviously gone more than that. She was probably three three kilograms plus um, in the last. She hasn't been bred for two years, so that's another reason why I went for her. I wanted one girl that was pretty well conditioned. But she does look how beautiful she is. She drives me crazy. She's baby, and that's going to lead me into something, Jan. Let's go back to the table. Uh, I want to just share something with everybody. Um, So anyway, that snake, when I first saw her, it made me feel like, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. This gracious great balls of fire! Kiss me, baby! skill too. <laughs> you 
you could probably tell that, Jared. Nope. <laughs> right, now we're going to go into a bit of education. Before we do that, I forgot to mention we did pick up an email um, from it's all on this F10 business. Where's that F10 bottle, Jared? You pass that to me. So we've got the, this is an F10 disinfectant that most of us use. And then I found out yesterday from a, a subscriber or viewer that there's another F10, which is an antiseptic, which we've ordered and it's coming this afternoon. So we're gonna do a test and see how it goes. When I put that out on the video, there was a really kind, um, <clears throat> Come out of breath, Jared. I need to get fit. <laughs> that wasn't good. Um, so we've got here Simon Tyra from Hillside Exotics. He said he loves the channel. He's done his own research on the two different F10s, antiseptic versus um, disinfectant. And Jared, what is the what is what is an antiseptic? I mean, what would you how would you describe an antiseptic? Uh, something that used to clean services or wounds or things like that. Yeah, well, antiseptic is more akin to the animals themselves. You oh, I was thinking of disinfectant. Disinfectant yeah. is surfaces, antiseptic is the actual body of the animal or the, um, that you're using. Cleaning so, wounds and So, when we show you a demonstration of how we do shots, um, we use an antiseptic wipe that we'd wipe down the area that we're going to put the needle in. So, that cleans the surface and prevents infection going into the animal from the needle. And obviously, you make sure that the needle is all infected, um, disinfected. And uh, it's all sterile, don't reuse them, <laughs> it's not a good idea. But to actually use a fresh one each time you do a shot. But we're going to do a proper, probably tomorrow we'll do that, Jared. We'll show a demonstration and probably have got time to put a video out. So, substances are covered by antiseptics, or not substances, um, animals, but disinfectants are covered by the um, sterilization of instruments and tables, Jared. That's what they do amongst the surgeons, top surgeons. Now, both contain an agent which is called biocide. Okay. The difference is the antiseptics have a much lower concentration of that agent. That's the difference. So your gut instinct yesterday was that you thought that this company was just rebranding it and it's the same substance. And I thought, well, let's find out. And one of our viewers very kindly has shed some light on this. He sent us a copy of an email that was from Sewer F10 team. And this is what she said. She said, the F10 antiseptic solution is a product that is licensed for treatment under the SAES in the UK. This product itself has the same comp composition as the F10SC, which is this one here, disinfectant solution, which you would also use for cleaning surfaces and enclosures. The products are effectively interchangeable, except for the fact that the F10 antiseptic, when it comes, I'll show you, has different labeling and is licensed for veterinary treatment. It is this protection of a treatment license that makes it the veterinarian product of choice for using for treatment of respiratory conditions and so forth, and is advised for use rather than the F10SC disinfectant. However, in places where the F10 antiseptic solution is not available in the US, for example, or treatment licenses are not needed, then the use of F10SC disinfectant for treatment is not a problem. <laughs> So your instincts, Jared, couldn't have been more correct. As long as that email is legit, and as long as Sue's legit, and I don't, I don't really know Simon that well, but I'm, I know his heart, which tells me he loves our channel, and he's trying to help us. So I, 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 the Jedi forces are telling me to trust his judgment. But having said that, we're gonna still do the experiment, aren't we, Jared? We're gonna try the new, you know, we just spent it. Now, on top of that, Solent, Solent Royals, thank you for your comment, he made the comment, he said, F10, a, uh, antiseptic might be a pre-mixed solution so check the ratios before you do the um, nebulization yeah the one you were showing on the video was a pre-mixed solution and what did you go I've for? gone for a concentrated one so this one here is concentrated okay so, and I've gone for the same style but in the and why, uh, why, did, you, why did you do that Chad because uh, it's more cost effective and also you can choose exactly how much you want to put in there excellent rather answer. than a pre-mixed you're on the same wave, wave as salt and royals. Yeah. Do you know what? This is another reason why I love Jared because he's so ahead of me. <laughs> you know, if I, I wouldn't have seen them, well, seen this coming at all, which Jared has, and that's been confirmed by Solent and royals. So I think Jared, you, the force is strong with you. The force is strong. Um, also, I just want to say a quick thank you to Colin, James, and Kirk. And I do apologise for anyone that missed the live premiering of um, 
Wayne's video because last night it was about 11 o'clock by the time I'd finished the thumbnails and uploads and things and I thought I'll get it out there and I thought I'll put it on a premiership and it said do you want to go premiership now and I thought yeah get it out there let people enjoy it and what I forgot to realize is that with the premiership you normally give people notice that it's coming <laughs> so my apologies mainly to Wayne because I it's so rude of me not to have actually um, told him that we were premiering that night and I know he still had time he's, he, I know he's still trying to catch up on the other two videos so. but um my apologies Wayne I hope that um that you're okay with that but uh, we'll make sure that the next parts will be premiered with notice it's likely to be tonight so there's some extra footage and you'll enjoy it we, we have a, a good laugh plenty of giggles and jokes and a special character features in there as well so please do feel free to come and join us okay so now let's get down to some business here back to the difference between antiseptics and um, antibiotics so we want to contrast the two now there are several ways of treating reptiles and now yesterday I asked you guys to do some homework and I think we need to cover some of that homework now. Let's go and see what this top professional vet stroke top snake keeper, Takri Abuzar, who I mentioned yesterday. Let's see if we can find out what he has to say. Um, which I think I've got here, hopefully, there we go. Um, just got to find the, uh, the information I'm looking for. Is it coming up, Jared? Is it, is it, is it working for us? Yeah. So there's your anatomy. Uh, there we go. So we've got nebulization. Now this is, what is this now? This is, um, oh, that's a bit more on F10. We won't cover that. I won't cover that. Just got to find the article. I think it's toward the end. Oh, here we go. I've got it. This is the bit I wanted to show you. So this is the article I mentioned yesterday. Okay. Beautiful. And these are the points that I think that we can pick out from this. So, um, Jared, what is a antibiotic? An antibiotic, as opposed to an antiseptic. Yeah. Is it? Um, I thought an antiseptic was for outside wounds and antibiotics for inside okay. illnesses, but I don't know, that's so, just my guess. Okay, so an antibiotic is a group, of, a group of medicines used to treat infections, so you're right, yeah. And it's all, they're also known as antibacterials and, anti, and antibiotics. And there are one, two, three, four, five different ways of um, administering, you've got uh, mouth, mouth it's in the mouth, liquids, tablets, capsules, and shots. That's the, coming off this article here. So I'm picking all this out of the article. Now the web page is uh, G Wet G W Exotics is the web page to go have a look for yourself. If you have, if you missed yesterday's filming, go back to yesterday's filming. You'll see it on there. So what they do is, Jared, what's the purpose of the antibiotics? What's their, what do they actually do? Fight off infections. Yeah. They fight off infections. Do they kill the infection? I'm not sure. Well, this is the this is the fallacy. See, so what antibiotics do? They kill the bacteria, and they are not. They don't actually kill the virus or the fungi itself because the infection can come from a virus or a fungi or from bacteria. Yeah, which is a type of bacteria anyway. So they kill the bacteria, but they don't actually kill the virus. Okay, but the so for, we can give you an example here. So. Rule number one in antibiotics, according to this writer here, and I'll see if I can find his rules on here. He does give us rules. Um, let's see if I can find it. Well, luckily I've summarised it, so just for expediency, I'll just give you the summary. So if you have a look at the article, it's all in there. This is my interpretation of it. Correct me if I'm wrong. So rule number one is... Um, it will not fix a problem that is not caused by bacteria. So there's no point in using antibiotics if it isn't bacteria driven. So you know when we said the RI has two strands to it. One is bacterial and one is viral. So if you don't diagnose correctly, you could be treating antibiotics to a snake and spend loads of money because you haven't done the proper diagnostics. And it might not be bacterial, it might actually be viral. And therefore viral but infections in snakes are virtually impossible to cure. It's almost like, you know, you've got just, 
either you've got to make a decision whether you give it some life or whether you decide to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Jared? Euthanise. Euthanise, okay. Now, it'll be interesting to know if anyone has actually treated a snake that's had a viral RI and got through it. If there's anyone out there, please let us know. Correct us, please, because we're learning. So, diagnostics is so important. So, what to diagnose it, Jared, what do we do with it? What does the vet do normally before we get going with any treatment? Has a look at the snake. Has a look at the snake. We should have a look at it. We can do our own inspection and we've gone through the causes of RI in earlier and videos symptoms, and yeah. symptoms. So we're not going to repeat that data, but there's lots of things, bubbling of the mouth and all these things. So the need for a swab test or a micro test under a microscopic air, um, testing, that should be done first, not after any treatment. And why do you think the swab test should be done before rather than after the treatment? To find out if it's viral or bacterial and whether or not you're treating it with the right thing yeah. because you can become immune to antibiotics. Yeah, so on the RIA that we had on that one snake that came from Europe, um, we took it straight to the vet and the vet did their diagnostics and she didn't do a swab test and we spent quite a lot of money, 300 and, I think it was £300, pounds, didn't we, on examining and shots for it and over a course of I don't know how many weeks and it wasn't improving. It did improve a little bit with the antibiotics, didn't it? but it wasn't actually um, improving enough. So she suggested doing the nebulisation. But before we do the nebulisation, she said, well, let, why don't, do you want to do a swab test? It's going to cost you 200 pounds to do it. And I said, of course, because I put the animal before. Obviously everyone has a budget, so I understand the financial restrictions. So she did a swab test, took three or four days to come back. And then the results of that swab test confirmed that it was bacterial, not virus. And we were pleased to hear that because if it was viral, we would have had that snake probably wouldn't be here now. We're still helping it back to health at the moment. So we've got this opportunity to learn, but we know it's got a bacterial infection. What annoys me a little bit is that that's kind of, what's the term when you do something back to front? Cart before the horse or horse before the cart? Horse before the cart, yeah? Meaning that if you diagnose, and this is what this top veterinarian says, he says the first thing you do is diagnose first before you treat. And the reason for that, Chad, do you know why that is? Yeah. Why is that? So you can treat the right thing. Treat the right thing. But not only that, if you do the test results coming from a swab test after you've already treated it, can be masked by the earlier treatment and you don't get the proper results. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the best way normally to deal with an infection, um, I'll show you a video by Triple B, um, Brian, Brian Cusco. Cusco. Let, it's not perfect, he's doing it on his own. I'll always recommend doing a shot with two people. Jad and I have done, done it. And together it's a lot easier. And I'll see if I can find the video and show you. Uh, here we go, Jad, I want you to zoom in on this and see what we think on this one. Okay. All right guys, so I'm gonna administer my first, uh, my first time administering anything injection wise into anything and the yeah. person uh, as you can see she's still got some some bubbling there on her mouth I'm sorry this is a, just a cell phone video and it's yeah you see that right there still some bubbles going on um it's only been a few days since her first antibiotics so i know that you want to inject into the upper third of the body and you want to go just maybe a quarter inch or so away from the spine into the muscle. This isn't something you want to inject into the bloodstream, it goes into the muscle. And it's a uh, ceftazidine. It's a broad spectrum antibiotic. And um, hopefully this will take care of whatever's ailing her, whatever kind of virus or bacteria she's got. And, um, and we can be done. We'll get the results back from the lab later this week. And, uh, We'll find out for sure, and hopefully that means hopefully it'll say that we're giving her the right stuff here, and we we'll just keep on giving it until she gets completely better, and uh, hopefully that's the case. But so the needle here, you can see. I'll let her back away for a second. See if I can focus on this needle with this cell phone. So you can see there's a hollow point on the needle, of course, and the the part that is open is kind of at a slant, and you want that to be facing up away from the body of the snake when you put it in. That's what the doctor told me. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Come on over here, baby. Okay. 
Yeah, hide your head, that's probably for the best. So you want to go in between the scales. There should be a good spot right here. Sorry, baby. Put my finger over it so now the stuff comes back out. She's definitely not happy about it. Okay, medicine's in. Really sorry about that, sweetheart. Hopefully she gets better. Alright, guys. Okay, well, I thought that was um, very, very interesting. And thank you very much, Brian, for sharing that with us, because for most of us that haven't done it, I'm not saying that's perfect, but that's probably his first attempt at it. I love him because He's so transparent, like the other Brian. And uh, we can contrast that with now an oral um, way of putting antibiotics into an animal. But there was a kind of a lot of things. Did you learn anything new from what Brian was teaching us that we haven't done, Jad? No. Is everything that we've been taught by our vet similar to what he's saying? Yeah. Pretty much that's the case, isn't it? So always take veterinary advice before you do all this. And it's got to be prescribed through a vet. You can't get this stuff. There is an antibiotic, and there's lots of different types of antibiotic that the swab test and the vet, who's, if they're a good reptile vet, will give you the right antibiotic to fit the culture that's been looked at on the swab to be able to match the right. Because a lot of people are telling me they've done all the shots and the, the stuff they're putting in, I can't remember what they call it, Jay, what's the name of it? Ceftezidine or something? Ceftezidine and there's one called Bax something or other. I can't remember exactly, we'll have to look at it. But people have diligently done this exercise and had very little improvement and so therefore it can be heart destroying because you don't want to put your snake through all that grief and pain, add stress to them as well. But I've seen and heard of many stories where it works. How much time do we have, Jared? Eight minutes, uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes. So now let's have a look at the, um, <clears throat> yeah, I better make a couple of points on using these various fluid antibiotics. It says some of them need to be stored in freezers mm -hmm. and you'll find to keep and maintain or to retain the efficacy now, efficacy, by that they mean to maintain the, the power built in that, the ability to actually do the job. If you expose it to room temperature for too long, you lose the efficacy, the effectiveness. So one of the mistakes people make is they leave it lying around outside of a either frozen environment. And some, some obviously each one's different, so take advice from your vet, but that's something to which I... The other mistake that people make is they don't finish the course. Now, six years ago, I had a really bad flu and I went through three courses of antibiotics over three months to shake it in the end. And I made the mistake of thinking I was better after the first course and it came back with vengeance. And I did the same mistake on the second course and it came back with vengeance and the doctor said, you've got to go the full course. Even if you think you're through it, you carry on taking the meds. And we do the same with our snakes, that even when our snakes are showing that they're okay, same with mites, we think they're okay, they'll come back and haunt you. Follow the advice and be consistent with the course, even if there's no symptoms, because what's the reason for that, Jared? There could be underlying things that the snake's not showing you that needs cleaning up. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is to avoid what they call mutation of viruses. So what happens is that um, in the first instances, these um, viruses, are, they can evolve. We know that from COVID. In the moment, we've got some of the worst mutations of COVID in our country. That's why the death tolls are moving up very fast. It's very contagious. So what happens with the vaccines? The vaccines are being made on the COVID um, analysis initially, but they've got to constantly look at improving the vaccines because the mutant virus will evolve and get stronger. And that's what happened to me with my flu. The flu was getting stronger in me, not, work, not better, because at the end of the course, the stronger bacteria or the stronger virus survive, the weaker ones go first. So even the viruses have strengths and weaknesses, so the weak ones get taken out first. But it's the stronger ones are left toward the end, where we think everything's fine. 
So the next stage is that those strong mutant adjusted flu viruses hit you even harder because you've actually got rid of the weak ones and the bigger ones then but the stronger ones produce even stronger and you've got a chain reaction here and therefore it's very important to finish the course uh, obviously. Um, the other thing to consider is um, let's have a little look. Yeah I suppose if we move on to when would, when would you use an oral um, antibiotic? Any ideas when that's appropriate? Because in most cases the vet will always say inject in most cases. Very rarely will they say go oral. It depends on the type of virus. Now if you've got a antifungal virus which is um, quite common, I mean not quite common it's quite rare but it's only because if you have poor ventilation or high humidity and you have a hygiene problem in your facility or your rubs or your vivs that causes fungi growth, fungus growth effectively like mushrooms are fungi but imagine you get these fungus spores growing in your rub or in your viv that one will need oral antibiotics to treat that so now I'm going to show you a video, two, two videos of how we can deal with oral antibiotics one's by NERD and the other one's by a qualified vet how many minutes have we got Chad? just three just three okay um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I might be able to just show you one of these then and then we'll have to Put wrap a link, up. Yeah, link in description you can do. Yeah, I'll do a link in description. But I want to just show you Nerd's video if I may. Um, I've got to find it now, just bear with me. Here we go. Have a look at this. I'll only show you part of it. It's, it's a three minute video. Well, but Okay, oh. we're going to treat this bloated rat snake. So this animal is uh, initially a wild caught animal. So, basically it's something like a Spilotes. We would be treating around 75 milligram per kilogram with metronidazole, which is flagell. So I'm gonna kind of just do a quick idea how to actually do this. So take this little rat snake. And basically, so, oh, ow! All right, so basically you wanna try to keep the stress down as low as possible. So all wild caught, rat snakes and such would have protozoa among other parasites so the, the quick little trick is take my thumb like this and I'm just going to do this in the back of the throat right there that's it and we're going to go to the next one so I treat this animal seven to ten days later I'm using a different set of forceps okay we'll hold it there Jeff now, we've only got a minute left, which we're going to just wrap up. So there's an example. We'll put the other one in the link. I hope you um, enjoyed that. Remember, these are opinions and different... You know, it's not 100% gospel, so please do consult your vet on all these things. Put some comments in the links below. If anyone's got any feedback they'd like to share with us, thank you so much for watching. Remember, tonight we're going to have Wayne's Part 2 and 3. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye for now.